Did you know that there are toaster-sized spacecraft orbiting around the Earth? Today, we're looking at the world of CubeSat, space science on a budget. What's a CubeSat? So, you can't afford millions of dollars to launch a satellite, but still want to carry out scientific investigations in or about the rigors of space. Have we got a satellite for you? This satellite has a volume of a little more than five Rubik's Cubes. They may not seem like a lot at first glance, but with the miniaturization technology on your side, you can fit a lot inside a cube measuring 10 by 10 by 11.4 centimeters on each side. The extra length is to hold required technology, so that leaves exactly one liter of usable space for the project itself. Origins. The CubeSat project was born in 1999 at California Polytechnic State University and Stanford University as a platform for students to learn about developing, building, launching, and performing an actual space mission. The first mission was launched four years later in 2003, and well over 1,200 CubeSats have followed since. So far, only 80 have been lost in launch failures, and 50 countries have participated in the project. This has advanced research and saved governments millions or billions. Size matters. Just look at all the technology packed into your average cell phone. There are usually five radios with four two-way transmitters and a GPS receiver. They have position, acceleration, movement, light, temperature, pressure, sound, speed, and rotation sensors, among others. They are sturdy, solid-state devices, rugged enough to tolerate a space launch. Some have already been employed in this fashion. Without a screen, they can run for days on a single charge. But a couple of solar cells generate enough power to keep it running constantly. They can record data, take pictures, create videos, and make a good base for designing a CubeSat. There is more advanced tech in a cell phone than the Apollo astronauts had to get them to the moon and back. Realistically, of course, the success of the program has led universities, institutions, and governments to develop purpose-built tech that consumes even less energy in space and eschews superfluous extras to save weight. This provides a test bed to create flight-proven hardware at minimal cost before an organization or government builds an actual satellite for launch. A single satellite could be very useful for one specific experiment that students might like to conduct. What do spiders build for webs in space? Or for continual observation? Why is the Sahara getting greener? It could be used as a test bed for a mercury vapor powered ion engine or any sort of one-off technology testing. Constellations of satellites can also be very useful. They can also share data and expand their reach and capabilities when working together. For example, even though his project is not part of a CubeSat, Elon Musk wants internet access for everyone from anywhere on Earth, and he wants to do that with a constellation of satellites in low orbits. Live and learn. Musk Venture has turned out to be a bit of a learning experience for all concerned. For example, his people didn't consider that they ought to make the satellites black, or at least not shiny and reflective. The first ones have been photobombing quite a few astronomical images, much to the annoyance of astronomers. Of course, that is exactly what these CubeSat missions are for, to teach the rest of us how to avoid future mistakes. How many can we launch? A standard launcher rack called a P-Pod for PolyPico Satellite Orbital Deployer is a rectangular box that can hold up to three CubeSat units. This can be added to any rocket that has extra capacity or delivered to the International Space Station and launched from the Japanese module's airlock. These devices are spring-launched without rocket motors, so there is no chemical residue, escaping gases, or anything that would interfere with the ISS operations. Other sizes. Of course, whenever you're told there is one size available, people demand variety. Consequently, there have been a number of variations developed. The sizes are measured in units, with the 10 by 10 by 11 by 4 centimeter forming the 1U CubeSat. Now they are available in 0.5U, 1U, 
1.5U, 2U, or 3U from the standard launcher. Still unsatisfied, more sizes have been developed because a 3U unit only needs one spring deployer. This provides a bit of extra tubular space on one end. This is usually used for a propulsion system or antenna array. CubeSats are proving so useful that they are being used for more than technology validation or academic work. Now they are being resized to suit much larger scientific goals and even national defense projects. Fast, cheap, temporary, these satellites use off-the-shelf technology. This is plug-and-play science, and that makes them very inexpensive. Better yet, when people are worried about adding more debris to our already crowded orbits, we can reassure them, because these units are launched low enough that they inevitably succumb to atmospheric friction and fall out of orbit to burn up in the atmosphere upon re-entry. That's not to say these are one-day missions. No, no, no. These are designed to operate for between 3 and 12 months, depending on need. You can collect a lot of data in a year if you need it that long. What have we done so far? Marco. While the list is long in the near-Earth vicinity, by far the most interesting was the pair of CubeSats named Eve and Wally after the animated stars of a Pixar film. Their mission was dubbed MARCO for Mars Cube 1 that left orbit along with the InSight mission to Mars. Their purpose was to perform real-time reporting of the InSight lander as it made its way to the Martian surface. WALL-E also provided imaging and relayed InSight's images from the landing site. EVE conducted some radio-related science, too. They achieved their goal admirably and confirmed the ability of CubeSats to operate Beyond Earth's orbit, the radiation environment above LEO, low Earth orbit, is harsh and equipment needs to be radiation hardened to survive. Ordinary gear can manage for a reasonable time in LEO so that it keeps costs down for early participants. They stopped chattering to us about 33 and 39 days after they completed their missions. Total time, 8 months. Result? Great success. Asteria. Asteria was the first Jet Propulsion Laboratory CubeSat to work in space. It was a 6U model designed to prove pointing capability for stellar photometry and precise temperature regulation thermal stability of the CMOS imaging device, like the camera found in some cell phones. It succeeded amazingly well in both of these areas. Cube RRT Microwave pollution of the radio spectrum won't decrease anytime soon. The mission was designed to mitigate the effects of man-made interference in the microwave spectrum. The RFI is compromising the ability to retrieve geophysical information from satellites. Hopefully the data obtained will improve the ability to mitigate data corruption for soil moisture, wind direction and speed salinity of the sea surface, precipitation, and atmospheric water vapor content. Griffix. Griffix was a successful 2015 3U technology validation mission of a sophisticated pollution tracker that utilized high throughput data handling to increase the speed of reporting for highly volatile conditions where pollution is moving rapidly. M-cubed Cove. The 2011 Michigan multi-purpose mini-satellite M cubed carried the 1U Cove CubeSat onboard processing validation equipment. Unfortunately, it became magnetically attached to another CubeSat during deployment. The satellite could not be controlled in any way, rendering it useless. This necessitated a second launch of the MMM Cove 2 in 2013, whose mission remained the same take mid resolution images of Earth while engaged with Cove. Cove's purpose was to use the photographic information as fodder for its new processing algorithm to reduce the data rate by two orders of magnitude, deliver the same data and all without losing any useful science information in the process. This entailed using a Field Programmable Gate Array, FPGA, which is essentially a powerful parallel processor that is more capable than the traditional variety. It can be reprogrammed after manufacture to accommodate new functionality. The one they chose was the radiation hardened by design 
Vertex 5 QVFPGA by Xilinx. What is planned? Lunar Flashlight ready to launch in late 2020. Lunar Flashlight's mission is to map the south pole of the moon using lasers to identify water ice deposits. This 6U CubeSat will use some of the same components as the MARCO mission mentioned earlier. Not incidentally, it will be the first CubeSat to reach the moon. NASA needs to expand the body of knowledge that tells where water could be located on the moon in useful quantities. Capstone. This mission will check out lunar orbits for viability, as well as new techniques for maintaining those orbits. Its full name is Cislunar Autonomous Positioning System Technology Operations and Navigation Experiment, which boils down to making sure it is safe for a moon orbiting outpost. C-Pod. This is an experiment to demonstrate two CubeSats working in close proximity and successful docking between the two. It's a test bed for many miniaturized technologies that we will need in the future. PTD, the Pathfinder Technology Demonstrator, will showcase many new technologies. For example, laser communication with the ground will significantly increase data throughput. It also looks to investigate new technologies to stabilize the spacecraft and to maneuver it, including leaving orbit and heading into deep space. The takeaway. The CubeSat platform can only make life better for small technology companies looking for an easy way to access the space development market. The fact that it has evoked the interest of industry and government makes it clear that it is not some fleeting instrument that stunned and finished one day. This is how we're going to get to the future, not by leaping into the air like Superman, but by ascending a long staircase, step by step. If you could launch a satellite in space, what would you have it do? Let us know in the comments below. And then check out this next video that you might find interesting.